think silver looks great. I think silver has is, is got a better chance, and I think silver will narrow the, the gold to silver ratio. Uh, and I think that silver will outperform. By the end of the year, I think silver will outperform gold. Uh, but I think that is a, if you're an investor or whatever, I think you should have a representation of both. Uh, I think that they are going to have some value. And in my opinion, there's a very real chance, depending on what happens in November, that you could need uh, gold and silver as a natural ca- currency once again. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if, if by the end of summer we're, you know, 25, 2600, maybe a little bit higher. The precious metals market has demonstrated remarkable resilience in 2024, with gold trading above $2,300 per ounce for most of the second quarter and recording its third consecutive quarterly gain. This performance marks gold's most substantial run since the COVID-19 pandemic, defying expectations amidst high interest rates, a strong U.S. dollar, and divergent trends in U.S. Treasury, 10-year yields, and ETF holdings. Industry veteran Todd Bubba Horwitz, with over 36 years of experience in finance, maintains an optimistic outlook on gold and silver. Horwitz anticipates gold reaching $2,500 to $2,600 by the end of summer, viewing recent pullbacks as natural fluctuations within the $2,300 to $2,400 range. ING's analysis aligns with this bullish sentiment, noting that gold has surged more than 15% year-to-date, maintaining historically high levels. The financial services firm predicts the rally will likely continue through the end of 2024, supported by the current global geopolitical and macroeconomic landscape. Often overshadowed by its more prestigious counterpart, silver is showing promising signs. Analysts believe it has a strong potential to narrow the gold-to-silver ratio and outperform gold by year-end. As of early Monday's European session, silver was trading at $30.95, experiencing a slight decline due to renewed U.S. dollar demand and higher U.S. bond yields. However, increasing speculation about potential Federal Reserve rate cuts this year may limit further losses. Horwitz emphasizes the importance of including gold and silver in investment portfolios for long-term protection against economic uncertainties. The complementary nature of these precious metals offers a balanced approach to hedging against market volatility and inflationary pressures. Please tune in for our exploration of Todd Bubba Horwitz's expert analysis. Don't miss out on future content. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay in the loop. We appreciate your support. Gold is going higher, Elijah. I mean, the pullback was natural. It was expected. Uh, We were stuck in a range and still are stuck in a range 2,300 to 2,400. Uh, But it wouldn't surprise me if if by the end of summer we're, you know, 25, 2,600, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to make some crazy, ridiculous prediction that they're going to the moon, but I think that they're going to continue to go higher. And the more problems that become in this country, the higher the value on physical metals is going to be. And as for silver, your perspective on that right now? I think silver looks great. I think silver has has got a better chance. And I think silver will narrow the the gold to silver ratio. Uh, And I think that silver will outperform. By the end of the year, I think silver will outperform gold. Uh, but I think that is a, if you're an investor or whatever, I think you should have a representation of both. I think that they are going to have some value. And in my opinion, there's a very real chance, depending on what happens in November, that you could need uh, gold and silver as a natural ca- currency once again. I'm a believer in metals. I think they should be everybody's portfolio should hold some. I mean, platinum at one point was over twenty five hundred. So, you know, again, you're looking at platinum right now at a thousand. So I, I, I think, again, I, 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 this is not something that is going to be, you know, that you're going to look at and say, well, how are the earnings? How is it? We don't have enough platinum. It should be increasing in price along with palladium and other things like that. And that's what we're really watching. Uh, and again, it's not a short term play. It's not a play that you listen. When you buy metals, you're not buying them to trade them, to scalp them out. You're buying them to hold them for a long term protection. And it is my I am of the opinion that platinum will once again go over the gold market when it gets when we finally get it going. But again, right now, the total focus of all investing dollars basically goes into the markets right now and the equity markets, which are totally an air balloon and a house of cards that will collapse again, as has done, you know, in 1987, 2001, 2008. And again, the next one that comes and many before that, going back to 1929, you know, we continue to forget about the problems and the overvalue that we, we we place on these. And of course, part of that is the big old grand scheme of things to help, you know, uh, let's let the rich and the, and, the, and the wealthy get wealthier and continue to step on the middle class and the poor. I think metals are ready to move. I think metals have been kind of underpriced and under pressure. 
and you start to see some of the breakout. I mean, if you look at silver, it really hasn't done anything for years, okay, in a in big perspective. Uh, and I think that, again, this is uh, the, the ever-changing evolution that we will see. And, and of course, uh, that, that includes Bitcoin as well, okay, because Bitcoin has now become, you know, more recognized as another stored a, a value of asset and, you know, non-regulated, non, non, non-central bank, you know, uh, controlled. And, of course, the United States being the fourth largest holder of Bitcoin, although they fought it all the way, you know, this, these are things that, that, that happen. And again, I think that having some stored assets of hard assets that you can put in your hand, and I'm not talking about buying paper because paper is worthless because I don't think there's enough gold and silver in the world to cover the amount of paper that's written on it. I'm talking about going out and buying real gold and silver and putting it in your safe and being prepared because if I'm right and there is a problem, and certainly I could see a major problem if, if, if President Biden wins the election, in November, I could see a massive problem happening in this country because there's a lot of people that are against it, and it would. Yeah, I think I think we're I think we're on the verge of the next civil or, or revolutionary war. Here. Horwitz expresses concern over the Federal Reserve's monetary actions, particularly regarding the money supply. He argues that the central bank's continued expansion of the money supply, facilitated by the fiat currency system, lacks substantive backing and is subject to manipulation. However, the Federal Reserve has recently announced plans to moderate its balance sheet reduction. Starting in June, the Fed will decrease the monthly cap on maturing treasuries, allowed to roll off without reinvestment from $60 billion to $25 billion, while maintaining the $35 billion cap for mortgage-backed securities. This move is partly aimed at alleviating potential strain on money market rates. Despite these economic conditions, Horwitz strongly advises equity market investors to implement hedging strategies to manage risk despite his full market participation. He recommends a diversified portfolio including gold, silver, and platinum for long-term stability. Looking ahead, two major events are expected to influence gold's performance through the end of 2024 significantly. The November U.S. presidential election and the anticipated Federal Reserve interest rate cuts. These factors are likely to contribute to gold's upward momentum. Additionally, ongoing central bank gold purchases are expected to support the precious metals value further. Let's get back to the interview. We're buying our oil from Saudi Arabia, okay? We could drill our own oil. We have a 300-year supply in this country at current usage, okay? And, and when Trump left office, oil was $31 a barrel, okay? So that would immediately cut your costs. And of course, since about 80% of everything we do is correlated to oil, whether it be the, the cost of production of plastics or the cost of delivery, the cost of driving your car. Okay, so that brings the inflation gauge down immediately. Okay, as far as the money supply, that's more the Federal Reserve's baby because the government does not, you know, the, the Federal Reserve is the one who decides to create more money and they're way out of their, their mantra and what they're supposed to be doing because their job is supposed to be stable markets and jobs not printing money to it whenever. But of course, when you have a fiat currency system that is fraudulent and manipulated and has no backing, you can do whatever you want. Because of course, the, the, the dollars are more monopoly dollars right now. I mean, the, the Dow, this Dow Jones at 40,000, when I started trading 40 years ago, the Dow Jones was 800. And you lived a hell of a lot better when the prices were down there based on what the prices were down there. But it has not stayed in a correct correlation because you've got too much federal intervention, which started with Alan Greenspan in 1980. If you're, if you're an investor in this equity market, you should be hedged. I mean, that's number one. We hedge all the time. I mean, I've got, I'm 100% invested in the equity market, but I'm fully hedged. So I've got a maximum risk of about four or 5% if the market collapses and goes to zero. Uh, I think that you should have some gold and some silver and maybe some platinum. I mean, platinum seems to be a pretty good value right down at these levels. Uh, it's less than gold. It used to be over gold. Uh, and I think you have to be diligent about how you're investing. And, and of course, you should not never be investing with funds you don't have. If you're if you're leveraging your investment, then you're going to go broke. There's no there's no way to be leveraged if you don't have the capital. So if you know you have to make sure the first thing everybody should do is they have credit card debt before you invest, pay the credit card debt because you're not going to make 26 percent return. So the first thing you do is you pay your credit card debt. The second thing you do is you start investing whatever you can afford monthly as part of your bills. You start putting that into the equity market no matter what, because the equity markets have proven an eight and a half percent gain year over year since the history and 10 percent since 1950. So if you're going to continue to do that, but again, it has to be with dollars that you have that you can afford that you're not going to have to sell it. The same when you buy gold and silver. 
you cannot buy with money you don't have because if you're forced to sell it, when you're forced to sell it, you're not going to like the price you're going to have to sell it at and the loss you're going to have to take. Given the current economic landscape with gold's resilience, silver's potential, and the anticipated impact of significant events like the U.S. presidential election and potential Federal Reserve rate cuts, how can investors strategically balance their portfolios to capitalize on precious metal strength while maintaining adequate diversification and risk management? Share your perspective in the comment section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.